Miss Rachel, you are Director for Youth and Children's Ministries, and that was a lot of fun. Fall Fest 2022, what an amazing experience. I thank each and every one of you that came out and set up and broke down and put things up and put things down and wore costumes and decorated trunks and served food and shared our community with our greater community. What a beautiful experience with St. Stephen back in action in 2022. We continue Sunday Seeds between services this week and also confirmation begins between services with Pastor Schenkel in the centering room just out in the narthex. And after, we will not be having youth group. We will have youth group from 5 to 7 p.m. 5 to 7 p.m. special time and special location at the Roses House. Thank you, Roses, for hosting this week's youth group adventure. We also have First Bible classes. First Bibles are happening right after church, and for all of your young hearts and families, I look forward to sharing time with you in the expansion of our knowledge and understanding. Remember, friends, God loves you, and so do we. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I resonate with uh, Miss Rachel last weekend, and especially the Falls Fest was incredible. Thank you for everyone's participation. Thank you, everyone who was there. It, it was just incredible. We estimated we had over 500 people from the church, the community, the school. The school had 26 families alone that came and participated in Sunday, so it was, it was just a great time. Thank you. Uh, don't forget the Parish News has all that good information about things that are upcoming. Uh, including the connection card, and the connection card is your ticket to anything you need from me, the church office, or if you have a prayer concern that you want us to add to the prayer chain, or if you're visiting with us and would like be, to be added to our mailing list, please fill it out with the appropriate contact information, and you can place it in the offering plate later on in our service when the offerings are received. So uh, the big question is what's going on with the floor as you come in, right? Well, for a year now, we've been watching the floor buckle right by the pillar and trying to figure it out without having to tear it up and no matter who we brought in as an expert nobody could really give us an answer so uh, once the bishop finished his visit visit we figured let's uh, let's take a look so um, we have a water test coming this week to check out we think there may be a, a small leak in the roof right above the pillar and water is working its way down that way um, so it's gonna be like that until we definitively find the problem before we patch it all up again uh, so thank you for your patience with that, and hopefully that won't last too long. The Coalition for the Homeless is looking for people to help cook turkeys as uh, they continue to feed those who are hungry. There are details in the parish news concerning that. And uh, this is the last week. October 28th is the deadline for giving a name if you want it remembered two weeks from today on our All Saints Weekend uh, Remembrances. So somebody who has uh, gone on uh, to be with the Lord. If you want them remembered on that weekend, please get those names to us as soon as possible. There are also some new Bible studies starting up, and the Parish News has information on that, and it's also not too late to join me on Wednesday nights in the Parish Hall at 5.30 for our uh, new Bible study, O oh, Sing to the Lord. Uh, as Miss Rachel mentioned, confirmation for a grade 6 and up begins today at 10.15 over in the sending room off the hallway on your way to the bathrooms, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing those uh, youth once again. And Leisure Club is having its Oktoberfest dinner this Thursday night at Hollerbox, and as of last night, there was one opening left, so if you want to join them, reach out to them for this Thursday's Oktoberfest. It is the 20th Sunday after the Pentecost, and today we hear the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, and I will have a matters of importance, a, a quarterly financial update. So let us take a moment of silent prayer, 
And then we're going to rise and join together in our opening song, You Are Good. Please stand as you are able, and let's sing it out, saints.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we are adopted as God's children and drawn into God's kingdom. By means of his word and supper, we gather to receive our Savior's mercy and then respond in thanksgiving and praise. Because of our sins of thought, word, and action, we are unworthy of the grace we receive. Therefore, at our Lord's invitation, let us come before our God in humility and faith, seeking pardon for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Received into the certainty and security of the eternal kingdom, be assured that you belong to God. You are God's children. Therefore, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs to be the thanks for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house and are singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. pray. Holy God, our righteous judge, daily your mercies surprise us with everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find their glory in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. The time from our annual congregational meeting on May 15th, when we passed our 2022-2023 fiscal budget, right up to today has been an intense time analyzing and reorganizing the church and school's finances. In the immediate aftermath of the congregational meeting, when we passed that budget, Kenny Fulgram was appointed by the church council to be our new treasurer, and we secured the services of Eric Shivers, CPA, to review reorganize and advise us on best practices regarding the church's financial accounting. Hundreds, if not thousands of hours have been spent by the CPA firm Kenny the Treasurer, Brenda Garlarza, our church administrator, Rod Cannon as budget and accounting coordinator, as well as myself diving into the church's finances. Thank you especially to this team for going above and beyond for the cause at hand. As a result of these efforts, the church and school's accounting system has been updated to QuickBooks Online, streamlining our financial recording practices. We also found it more efficient and productive to change our electronic giving vendor. And thank you for your patience in making these changes with us. We are transitioning the manner in which we present our budget so that it lines up more directly to reflect our mission and priorities. And thankfully, while we found several accounting mistakes and oversights, there were no major red flags or improprieties regarding the church or the school's finances. 
The final step in this process was to reconstitute the church's resource committee. The resource committee helps to assist and advise the treasurer and the church council on financial matters. Doug Carey, who is a lawyer, and Josh Langholtz, a thriving financial professional that many of you know, were added to the resource team to offer their expertise. As we come out of the first quarter of the 2022-2023 fiscal year, we can see signs of the overhanging economic realities that surround the country at this time. The first quarter of the fiscal year, the summer months, is always our weakest and most challenging quarter of the fiscal year. Unfortunately, our giving for the first quarter of this fiscal year was lower than last year's first quarter. And this is somewhat surprising as last year, COVID still loomed large during the first quarter. This fiscal year's first quarter has seen a wonderful increase in in-person attendance in church over last year's, but giving has been less. It is my hope that as we move into the holiday season, this trend will not continue. When I presented the budget at the May Congregational Meeting, I intentionally presented a budget that was the basic essentials of St. Stephen being the church we desire her to be while matching the mission and the priorities that we have laid out in our mission and vision statement. The way that I see it is that it is vital and necessary that we meet the annual budget as we laid it out in our annual meeting to be the church that we believe St. Stephen to be. If we do not meet the budget as we planned, then we will seriously have to discuss what ministry priorities are no longer important to us as we move into the next step of the Lord's work in this community. Our staffing is already bare bones. If we need to cut staff, we would have to decide what is not important to us anymore. Youth ministry, music, cleaning and caring for the buildings and grounds, or maybe having a part-time pastor instead of a full-time pastor. And the buildings and the ground expenses are what they are. Having multiple buildings that are aging requires diligent and regular upkeep and maintenance. Neglecting issues now only becomes more costly down the road. So thank you for all the ways that you support our work in ministry here, and thank you for prayerfully considering how you can continue to challenge yourself to enable St. Stephen to be everything we believe God has called us to be here in this community. If you have any further questions about this, please reach out to me or to our finance team. If you would like to sign up for electronic giving or change your donation amount, please reach out to Brenda in the church office. We are incredibly blessed here at St. Stephen, and we are a blessing to this community and the people around us. And we all together, as we respond to God's grace, enable those blessings to continue to grow and be spread. Thank you for your consideration of all this. The first reading is from the 14th chapter of Jeremiah. Although our inequities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, with like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be someone confused like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O oh Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning this people, truly they love to wander. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquities and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace, but find no good for the time of healing. But there is terror instead. We acknowledge our weakness, weakness, wickedness, O Lord, and the iniquity of our ancestors. 
for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember, and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idol of the nation bring rain, or can heavens give showers? It is not you, O Lord, our God. We set our hope on you, for it is you who do all of this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The second reading is from 2 Timothy, beginning the fourth chapter, starting at the sixth verse. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day, and not only to me, but also to all those who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you're able. St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Contempt is defined in Webster's Dictionary as having no respect. It's the act of despising. Digging a little deeper in that, we see that to despise something is to completely consider it worthless. Someone or something just doesn't have a place. Digging deeper into those definitions helps us understand what it means when somebody is held in contempt of court. They have no respect. They think the process is worthless. And Jesus tells this parable in the gospel lesson today about the Pharisee and the tax collector because he is surrounded by people who are filled with contempt. 
labeling and looking down upon others because they are worthless. And the primary object of his scorn in the gospel lesson is the Pharisee, a societal leader who is lifted up and respected by others because he's supposed to serve them and lead them. But we see in the gospel lesson that this Pharisee has nothing but utter contempt for those whom he is called to serve and he can only snidely look down upon them and label them while he feeds his own ego and self-esteem. In contrast is the lowly despised tax collector who can't even pick his eyes up off the floor and beating his chest, he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus establishes that it is the attitude, the demeanor of the sinful tax collector that is more appropriate for the kingdom of heaven. And it should not be lost on us that Jesus points out that it's the Pharisee in the gospel lesson who has the problematic attitude when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. Because the Pharisee is a religious leader. He's the one people consider to be holy and righteous. He's the God guy. And it's the religious righteous one who has this problem in being contemptuous and labeling others. And this serves as an important and powerful reminder for us today because as we gather here in God's house, don't we do so because we consider ourselves holy and righteous? Isn't that our desire? Yet we must always be on guard on allowing the labels of the world and society around us to cause us to look at others with contempt. To look at what they believe, they think, they feel as being worthless and not to be respected. And when I came here to St. Stephen over a year and a half ago, I could see and have seen during my tenure here two issues that have caused us as a family of faith to sometimes wrestle with contempt because of the labels that surround us in the world in which we live. One of these issues comes from the outside secular world and slithers its way into the church. The other issue is one that has risen within the church itself and continues to stoke the fires of contempt. We are a little more than uh, two weeks away from another election day with national implications. I want you to think back to your thoughts, your demeanor, your attitude two years ago, four years ago, six years ago, when we had other elections with national implications, whether they were presidential or whether they were, they were congressional elections. Think about your attitudes, your thoughts, behaviors. Think about your conversations, or shall I say your heated arguments with family members and friends. Think about the things you posted on social media and how they have aged up to this day. Think about how you may have treated some of your brothers and sisters in your family of faith when it came to political matters. I have to admit, I was appalled when I first came here to St. Stephen and saw some of the contempt that was exhibited towards fellow members of the church. And it gave me the impression that some people believed that their hope was really in worldly leaders in worldly elections instead of Jesus. As you approach the election booth again in a couple of weeks, I want you to think about this. As of 2021, there were a little over 330 million people who lived here in the United States. Out of those 330 plus million people, 546 make up the House, the Senate, the Presidency, the Vice Presidency, and the Supreme Court. And I can assure you of this, 
very rarely and very few of those 546 people think much about you, your opinions, or your faith. Statistics overwhelmingly show that when those 546 people leave government, they are much richer than when they first got into government. When we allow those 546 people to cause us to be divided from one another because of labels that we use to throw at each other because we have contempt towards others because maybe they don't think or feel or vote the same way that we do. We are putting ourselves in the place of the Pharisee in the Gospel lesson. Now there are always going to be those outside secular issues that are going to surround us, the agendas and all the chaos that they bring. We don't have much control over that. But what we do have control over is the things that go on and come from within the church. And the second issue that has bothered me since I came here to be your pastor is how sometimes we allow labels that exist within the church to cause us to have contempt towards one another and be divided from one another. For over 30 years now, the Christian church at large has been struggling with what is vulgarly referred to as the worship wars. This is when we allow labels regarding how we worship or the music that we have in worship to define us. Things like contemporary versus traditional worship, band-led versus organ-led, prayer and praise music versus liturgical music. Now, all music is a gift from God. Except maybe country music. No, I'm just kidding. My wife is going to kill me when she hears that. Let me tell you. But all music is a gift from God because it comes from God's creation. People, in their emotions, as they experience life, are moved to the art form of music to express themselves. Martin Luther once said that next to theology, music is God's great gift. And here at St. Stephen, we've just begun this new Bible study, Oh, Sing to the Lord, on Wednesday nights. And you're welcome to join us. And it's a Bible study to look at this gift of music that God gives us and how it affects the Word of God and the church. And when you do an overview and a survey of music in the Bible and instruments in the Bible, what you can very quickly see is that there is no prescribed style of music or instruments that God commands to be used in the church or when God's work is done. As a matter of fact, here are some of the instruments, just some of the instruments of the Bible that God has used to do his work. Cymbals, trumpet, horn, drums, pipe, strings, tambourine, and harp. When we gather in the house of God, music is an important part of us receiving the gifts and blessings that God gives to us, but it is not the primary reason why we gather together in church. We come to church to have an encounter with God through the gifts of word and sacrament. Music is a cradle that helps to bring these gifts to us. Yes, it is okay for, have, for us to have our own musical tastes and preferences. That's what makes us the unique individual creations that we are. That's why we all drive different cars. That's why we don't all live in the same houses. That's why we don't all eat the same food every single day of our lives. What is a problem is that when we take our preference and we make it something that we label and look down upon others that their thoughts on such a matter are worthless. When we scowl and think things in church like, well, drums are inappropriate for church and not appropriate for music, or it's not church and I would never go to church when the organ is playing, 
we have placed ourselves again in the position of the Pharisee. And from what I can see in the gospel lesson, that's not a very good place to sit. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot have your own opinions when it comes to politics, that you can't vote for who you want to vote for. And I'm not saying that you can't like certain church songs more than other songs. But what I am saying is what Jesus is saying in the gospel lesson. Be aware of your thoughts and your attitudes when it comes to such things and make sure that your demeanor, that your attitudes concerning such things doesn't put you in a place where you elevate yourself above others and look down upon others and their thoughts, their opinions, and their ideas as being worthless and unworthy because that's at odds with the cross of Christ. What the cross of Jesus means to us is that when God could look at us and label us, especially as sinners, and hold contempt against us eternally, God chose not to do so. Instead, God has shown us nothing but grace and mercy and love. So do your civic duty on election day. Do your homework. Formulate your own personal opinions regarding political manners. And when you pull the lever, I know, we don't pull the lever anymore. We fill out those little circles and feed it into the, commu into the computer. But when you do so, say to yourself, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, who doesn't always get it right and doesn't know everything. And when you sit in church, and maybe you hear a sound or a song that doesn't strike a chord with you, again say to yourself, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Because I need you, God, to meet me here in this place right now as the sinner I am with the gifts of your grace, love, and forgiveness. And always remember this. No matter what's going on out there and the chaos that it causes. And no matter how God meets us here in the gifts of word and sacrament and song, God is meeting us here to assure us there is no contempt against us and to bring us to that place where he will raise our hands in the eternal victory. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and we will sing this great hymn of our faith, When in Our Music, God is Glorified.
Let us confess our faith, the faith in which we baptize with the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God of mercy, you are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Inspire your church to serve and love all people without content or division with the unceasing grace you extend to us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. God of creation, you form a world where even the sparrow finds a home. Preserve the beauty and diversity of all creatures with whom we share the earth. Lead us to protect all living things. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is grace. God of peace, you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. Rescue families and nation torn apart by violence and warfare. Unite all people towards common goals of reconciliation and peace for every person. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, you stand with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people with the fears or anger, anxiety, or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially all those we name at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of restoration, you call us to trust in you and not ourselves alone. Make this congregation a community of humility and repentance, ready to encounter you in love and to follow you in your ways. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of eternal life, to you be the glory forever. We give you thanks for all who have fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith, and now live with you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings.
rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and our duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestowed on us and all creation. At Jesus' gracious invitation, we, your children, come unto him and receive the assurance that you have made us members of your eternal kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. and thanksgiving, O oh Father, we offer to you our sacrifice of praise. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we are welcomed into your eternal kingdom and given the inheritance that belongs to your children. With certainty in the promises of Jesus and his salvation, gather us together with all the faithful that we may rejoice at the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his Son to be our Savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. We come again to you, O God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way. Equip us for every good work that we may continue to give thanks to you give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. beside you.